them, we'll be discussing non-homogeneous difference equations. So in the previous lessons, we have seen how we can determine a solution, a solution or rather solutions to difference equations, specifically they were homogeneous. What do we mean by homogeneous? We mean that f of some dependent of some independent variable was equal to zero. For example, the function on the right hand side was equal to zero. Now we can also have non-homogeneous difference equations. So in this lesson, or the lessons that will follow from now, we're going to be discussing ways in which we can solve non-homogeneous difference equations so let's have an example of some example of some problems which we had so we had y sub k plus 2 minus 7 y sub k plus 1 plus 10 y sub k is equal to 0. well you see this over here it's your function of the independent variable k and you can see that it's equal to zero. Hence, this is homogeneous. So every time we solve a difference equation that is homogeneous, the solution you get is called a complementary function. Call a complementary function or a general solution. If I'm given initial conditions, If I'm given initial conditions, I can therefore solve for my variables. But this is still um, uh, is a particular solution, right? So once you know your variables, you now have a particular solution, but it's still a particular solution to a homogeneous equation. So now, if this right hand side here was not equal to zero, let's say it was equal to some number three, the way in which you solve might change a bit. So for non-homogeneous difference equations, so for non-homogeneous difference equations, your function or your solution, which I can call y sub x, will be equal to the sum of the complementary function plus something called the particular integral and we haven't covered what the particular integral is but at least we have covered what the complementary function is so this one over here the complementary function how do we solve for it well we solve for it by equating the right hand side to be equal to zero and then the particular integral will go over how to solve it so let's have the first example for this for this um, for non-homogeneous difference equations. Let's say I'm, I'm given x sub r plus two minus three x sub r plus one equal to five plus four x sub r. So what I'm going to do here is to rewrite my difference equation, right? So I'm going to rewrite this so that the 5 is on its own. So x sub r plus 2 minus 3 x sub r plus 1 minus 4 x sub r is equal to 5. This over here is my function. So f of the independent variable in this case is r. So f of r is equal to 5, right? This is my right hand side. Well, let's classify this equation by homogeneity. Can you say it's homogeneous or not? Well, look, I've got a 5 here, right? It's not it is 0. If this 5 was 0, then I was going to say it's homogeneous. But since 5 is not equal to 0, this difference equation is non-homogeneous. And therefore, for me to solve the, the solution to this equation, y sub r is going to be equal to the sum of the 
complementary function plus the particular integral. So let's start with this part which we know. So remember that for the part for the complementary function, let f of r or the right hand side to be equal to zero. This means that I'm going to assume that this five is a zero. Let's do that. So I'm going to have x sub r plus two minus three x sub r plus 1 minus 4x sub r is equal to 0. So, let's see what we have. Okay. So, I'm going to assume a trial solution. So, a trial solution is called an answer. An answer is an educated guess. We're not just guessing. We are making a um, an educated guess. So I'm going to assume that x sub r is equal to a e is equal to a lambda to the power of r in this case. Right. So this will be my trial solution. And then for me to find um x sub r plus one, I have to replace r in here with r plus one. So x sub r plus 1 is equal to a lambda to the power of r plus 1 is equal to a lambda r times lambda to the power of 1. Okay, sorry for that. To the power of 1. And then for me to find x sub r plus 2, I have to replace the r in here with r plus 2. If I do that, I'm going to have a lambda to the r plus 2 is equal to a lambda to the power of r lambda squared. Then I will take these terms and I put them in the difference equation over here. So let's see what we have. So x sub r plus 2 is equal to a lambda r lambda squared minus 3 x r plus 1 is equal to this part over here, which is a lambda to the power of r lambda to the power of 1 and then minus 4 x sub r is this one over here which is a lambda to the power of r and i'm going to equate that to zero now i've got a common factor of a lambda r a lambda r a lambda r therefore i'm going to put it out as a common factor so a lambda r if i take it out here i'm left with lambda squared and here i'm left with 3 and lambda is 3 lambda, and here I'm left with minus 4, and the answer is equal to 0. Well, I'm going to say a lambda r equal to 0, or lambda squared minus 3 lambda minus 4 is equal to 0. But I said this must be a non trivial solution. So if you don't, if it doesn't make sense, make sure to watch the previous. Lessons on how to solve homogeneous difference equations. So we said our trial solution must be of this nature, and this is what we found over here. But we want this solution to be non trivial, meaning it must not be zero. Well, this means that this part here is the one that must be zero. Now let's solve for lambda here. Well, I can factorize this into lambda, lambda, I put negative four this side, and I put positive one this side, and I quit is zero right if we can factorize feel free to use the quadratic formula now what this means is that lambda minus four is equal to zero or lambda plus one is equal to zero therefore lambda one is equal to four or lambda two is equal to negative one well my complementary function is going to be a lambda one right to the power of r plus b lambda 2 to the power of r. Therefore, if I plug in the value of lambda 1 and the value of lambda 2, I'm going to have a multiplied by lambda 1, which is 4. So it's 4 to the power of r, and then plus b multiplied by lambda 2, which is negative 1 to the power of r. Okay, so now let's see. We now have the complementary function. But remember, we still have something here. The right hand side 
is equal to 5. Right, so we must go back to that. So when you are doing your particular integrals, here are the basic ones which I need to know. If it's a constant, assume your trial solution to be equal to a constant C. If it's a linear function, then assume your particular integral to be of the form ax plus b. If it's a parabola, then assume your particular integral to be of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. So on and so on for cubic function, it's going to be, so if it's a cubic, then I'm going to have my particular integral being ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. And the last one which I need you to know is for exponential functions. So for exponential functions, your particular integral will be of the form a constant times e to the power of some number x. And we'll see, we're going to do examples on how to apply this. So in this case, our right hand side or our difference equation, I'm going to write it, it was given as x sub r plus 2 minus 3 x sub r plus 1 equal minus 4 x sub r is equal to 5. Right. Now my right hand side is equal to 5. This means that my particular integral will be equal to a constant c. I won't call it 5. Right. So I'm going to call it c. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to replace this term here with this term here and this term with a c, right? So it means that um, x sub r must be equal to c. And x sub r plus 1, I'm also going to equate it to c. And x sub r plus 2, I'm also going to equate it to c. I'm going to equate all these terms to c, right? Why? Because my particular integral is of the form of a constant, OK? So I'm still assuming a general, a general a trial solution, but now I'm, I'm looking specifically on the form in which um, the function on the right hand side takes. So this is my initial solution. This is my initial answers, right? And this one's are just gonna be. So if it's a constant, this is how it's just gonna be. And then I'm going to replace all these terms into the given expression over there. If I do that, I'm going to have c minus 3c minus 4c is equal to 5. Well, let's add that and see what we get. So if I say negative 3 minus 4, I'm going to get negative 7. But then 1 minus 7 is going to be equal to negative 6. So negative 6c is equal to 5. Therefore, c is equal to negative 5 over 6. Right. So what does this mean? Well, this means that my particular solution is equal to a constant here, which is equal to negative 5 over 6. Therefore, my final answer, which is x sub r, will be equal to the sum of the complementary function plus the particular integral of which x sub r is going to be equal to, we found this already, it was 4 and negative 1. So it's a times 4 to the power of r, and then plus b times negative 1 to the power of r. Then I'm going to add x of p, which is negative 5 over 6. And this is how you can find um, the general solution a non-homogeneous difference equation. So you, you need to know all this. So if it's a constant on the right hand side, your particular integral takes this form, right? And if it's a linear, it takes this form. And I'll try to do an example of each where you see how you can apply all of this. And thank you for watching.